Chuck Wagon MTG is sponsored by BC Comics and Games. Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for another great deck tech here on Chuck Wagon MTG. Today, we bring you Demir Artifacts, a standard blue-black deck that turns small artifacts into a big win. Priced at about $200 in paper and 70 ticks on MTGO, this deck is surprisingly powerful and remarkably fun. So let's dive right into the artifacts. Uh, first we have 4 Fountain of Renewal that costs 1 each and will add 1 life at the beginning of your upkeep. This gives you a head start with your life while your win conditions come together. You can also sack this later for card draw if you need to. Uh, we have 4 Navigator's Compasses. An artifact for one that gives you three life when it enters and can transform any land into any color you need. Since we're playing some double black and double blue spells, this will come in handy and help regulate your mana colors. Next we have three Sentinel Totems. An artifact for one that allows you to scry when it enters and can be sacked to exile all cards from all graveyards. If you see Arclight Phoenix or any other graveyard threat, Popping one of these will be well worth the one mana. Next we have four copies of Damping Sphere. This is an artifact for two that adds a cost of one for each additional spell cast. This will slow down everyone. But for you this won't matter so much, as you will be casting only one or two spells per turn and will be relying on your battlefield spells to generate power. Our last artifacts are four treasure maps. This artifact for two states that you can pay one, tap it, and scry one. Then you can put a landmark counter on treasure map. If you accrue three of these landmark counters, then it transforms into treasure cove and makes three artifact tokens. You can sack these tokens to treasure cove for card draw, you can sack them for mana, or you can hold on to them for your first win condition, the Antiquities War. Antiquities War is a saga for three and a blue. When it enters the battlefield, it lets you search the top five cards of your deck and find another artifact. At the beginning of your next upkeep, you do it again, and then the following upkeep, it turns every artifact you have on the battlefield into 5-5 five, five creatures. This has the potential to bury your opponent in a single attack. To clear the board prior to your attack, we have a second saga, Phyrexian Scriptures. For two and two black, it puts a 1-1 counter on a creature, and it makes that creature an artifact. At the beginning of your next upkeep, it destroys all non-artifact creatures. Then, at your next upkeep, it exiles your opponent's graveyard. Our other removal spell is Ritual of Soot, a sorcery for two and two black that destroys all creatures with a converted mana cost of three or less. Our next win condition is Karn, Cyan of Urza. A Planeswalker for four, you can plus it up to reveal two cards and get one in your hand selected by your opponent. You can minus one it to get one of those cards that you were exiled put into your hand, or you can minus two it and have it create a zero zero artifact construct creature that gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control, which in this, in the case of this deck is a lot. With all of your artifacts, this has the potential to become a huge threat. The card draw also adds gas to your deck. Finally, we have Tezzeret, Artifice Master, a Planeswalker for 3 and 2 blue that can create a 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with its plus 1, or with its 0 ability, draw cards. We're not going to use the minus 9 ability in this deck. Tezzeret also becomes a good target to draw your opponent away from you for a turn or two to avoid some damage. We also have four ops for card draw. In the sideboard, we have two duress to weed out any non-creature spells like Cleansing Nova that can end your game in one fell swoop, two negate to defend your attackers from board sweeps, two Golden Demise to take out tokens before they become too big to handle, one Unmoored Ego because sometimes you need to get that one card out of their deck before it can ruin your day, three Vraska's Contempt, 
for planeswalkers and larger threats. Three hostage takers, because your opponent won't see it coming. After your first game, your opponent will sideboard out most of their anti-creature spells. That's when you bring in the hostage takers and our final sideboard cards, two Zahid Jinn of the Lamp, that can be cast for three and a blue and a tapped artifact. Play around with the sideboard to figure out what works best for your meta. I found this deck fun. Although it lacks early game explosiveness, it can easily regain ground with its many life-gaining artifacts, mid-game removal, and the devastation of its all-out attack. I hope you enjoy it. Well, thank you for watching. We here at Chuckwagon MTG hope you enjoyed this deck tech. If you did, please hit the like, subscribe, and bell notification to see what comes next. And be sure to share this with your friends, your family, your loved ones, and your pets. Everyone could use a little more magic in their lives. Thanks again, and be sure to find us on Facebook and Twitter. Let us know what you think. Now hang on tight for a word from the best gaming store in Michigan. Chuck Wagon MTG is sponsored by BC Comics and Games, now at one mega location to fill all of your gaming and comic needs. They have Magic the Gathering events every night of the week, as well as Warhammer, Pathfinder, Dungeons and Dragons Adventures League, Final Fantasy TCG, Pokemon, and Star Wars X-Wing events all throughout the week. They also have close to 100,000 comics on site. This is why I have personally made BC Comics and Games my home gaming store.